Hello everyone, welcome to Lab 2 of Environmental Monitoring and Modeling. My name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. In Lab 1 we learned how to search for a single image and display it in the map environment. From an environmental monitoring perspective, we're often interested in how and where different components of landscapes are changing over time. Understanding landscape context is very important as ecological processes change with topographic position. The objective for the lab today is to learn how to access, visualize, and query digital elevation data for any given study location. I'd like to acknowledge the Google Earth Engine team and the Geospatial Analysis Lab at the University of San Francisco, especially Nicholas Clinton and David Saar. So first up is just a bit of a, a recap of the Earth Engine interface. You can find this tutorial online at www.geospatialecology.com and we're currently working through EMM Lab 2. So getting back to the interface, this is just a little graphic representation of what we discussed in Lab 1, showing the different components of the Earth Engine environment. We have the Editor Panel, the Asset Manager, Geometry Tools, Zoom Tools, the layer manager, the console area for output, and our primary code editor, and the map interface that we'll all be familiar with. Remember that you can access Earth Engine through this web address, code.earthengine.google.com. Now we're going to come down and get started straight away in handling some elevation data. If you have an existing script in your code, space you can clear it by clicking on the reset button the drop down arrow clear script today we're going to work with the srtm digital elevation data the 30 meter product srtm stands for the shuttle radar topography mission and if you come up in the main search box and type in srtm you'll see a number of different data sets appear we're going to use the 30 meter product. If we click on that, you'll see some information and a reference to um, a paper that explains how this data was collected from space. Um, this data is global in its extent and it's at 30 meter spatial resolution. It only contains one band with the elevation above sea level values. We'll import it to our workspace by clicking the import button and we'll see that we've created a variable in the import section. You can double click on there and rename that SRTM to represent our SRTM image collection. Now if we want to actually visualize this, we can use a simple piece of code map.addLayerSRTM. I'm going to copy that paste it into our code environment, hit run, and you'll see that I'm, although I'm zoomed out to the global extent, this is a global data set and it covers the landmass across the world. If we zoom in a bit closer to Australia, you can see that the whole continent is covered, but it's very hard to visualize any, any patterns here as the, we haven't defined any visualization parameters. What we need to do is define a min and a max elevation value. So if we copy in this next piece of code here, you'll see just like in lab one, within the curly brackets, we can define the minimum and maximum elevations. And we can also include a layer name. I'll copy that. I'm gonna just paste it over that previous code run it again and this time still in on, on a black to white scale but we can see or at least start seeing the shape and texture of the topographic features within Australia. If we want to start making that look um, even more interesting we can include a color palette. If we copy the next piece of code and drop that in here. 
You can see I've adjusted the parameters a bit. I've changed the maximum to 300 meters above sea level, and I've included a pallet within the curly brackets. The palette is going to scale from blue through to yellow to red, and I'm going to call the layer elevation above sea level. I'll hit run, and now you'll see in our layers tab that we now have two layers here. First, the original DEM, and second, our elevation above sea level, which should have the improved um, color range. And that's what we see coming through here. Remember that you can turn these layers on and off as you wish. Let's zoom in a little bit closer um, up to Northern Australia, the region around Kakadu National Park. You can see quite nicely here the escarpment of Arnhem Land with a sharp drop off to the large floodplain rivers of the north. Although we can see this elevation just by, by color, we can also make use of the inspector tool, this tab up here on the right hand side. As we click around the image, we'll see that we query the elevation values and these get returned to us in the inspector. The next step in our tutorial is um, hill shading and slope. For an even better visualization, we can create a hill shaded view of the elevation data. Remember that you can use layer transparency options to create draped images for colorized hill shades. So copy in the piece of code and then we'll discuss it. I'm going to just paste that in and you'll see that I'm creating a variable called hill shade and I'm making hill shade equal to earth engine terrain hill shade. And I'm retrieving this command from the docs section. If you type in terrain here, you'll see we have a number of terrain tools. Um, aspect, minima, shadows, hill shades, products, and slope. So this is a sp specific set of tools for dealing with terrain data. And you'll find that this docs tab is very useful for calling up all the different commands within Earth Engine that we're going to use in this course. So just to recap that, our variable hill shade is going to apply a hill shade to our SRTM image. We're then going to add it to the map using map.addLayer and it'll be the hill shade we're adding. I'm defining the visualization parameters and I'm calling that layer hill shade. When I hit run, We'll now see three layers in our tab. I'm going to untick the original DEM. So now we should just have the hill shade as well as the colored elevation above sea level below it. And quite a nice trick is just to place the hill shade on top. And you can see now the, the texture to the landscape. And we can use that transparency sl slider to just allow those colors to come through. And that way we can see how elevation changes along the color scale, but we retain the texture in the landscape. You can play around a bit, move to some different parts of Australia, maybe head over to, to Cairns, where we have a bit of a, a steeper um, gradient running down into the ocean, or zoom right out and head down to the southeastern part of the country. We can see some steeper rivers flowing into the southern oceans. And here we really see that shape of the landscape coming through. The next part of our, our lab for today is to apply a, a computation to an image. And this is effectively a way of, of masking areas of interest. Say, for example, we were interested in only in areas within Australia that are at elevations greater than 200 meters. We could use this piece of code here. I'm just going to copy, paste that in as before. 
I'm going to create a variable called high, and that's going to be equal to srtm.gt in brackets 200. The gt here would stand for greater than. So I'm, this new variable is going to equal areas where the SRTM data is greater than 200 meters. We can then visualize that by adding it to the map, calling up this new variable high, and labeling it above 200 meters. If I hit run and zoom a little bit further out, you'll see the original dam layer loading up, the digital elevation layer, our colorized version I'll, tick those, I'll untick those just to save time <clears throat> and then the last layer to load is our masked layer this is the layer that highlights areas that are greater than 200 meters above sea level so this is a binary image in black we have the areas that are lower than 200 meters and in white areas that are that are higher than 200 meters. The last thing I want to show you for this particular lab is that we can also play with these color palettes. You'll see up here that I've got the blue, yellow, and red specified. We could add in a few more colors to this. For example, I can insert green between blue and yellow. Let me just add a comma between the different colors and I could add black in here and now we would have a color scale that runs along five different colors. So if I run that and just leave the elevation above sea level ticked you'll see that we now have five colors showing up. Tick the hill shade and we can use this approach to develop the, the color um, scales that you're interested in and create very visually appealing products. Spend a bit of time to move around the globe, have a look at some interesting topographic features. You can also play a bit more with different types of terrain functions. You'll see over here that we can um, calculate aspect, we could calculate slope, and the last part of the lab here, you'll see the command for adding a slope layer to the map. The last step for today is also to explore how we can query and get quantitative values back from the imagery. And we call this a spatial reducer. So let's say, for example, that we and for this exercise, we will come back to the northern part of Australia. I'm going to untick all of these data sets except for the original um, DEM. You can actually untick that for the moment too while we navigate. And let's say we were interested in the mean elevation of Kakadu National Park. We could come over here, create a geometry. I'll just do this very roughly for the moment. But as we click around, we can define a polygon area like this. You'll see that variable is called geometry. If we copy in this piece of code and have a look at what we've written, we are going to add um, the layer SRTM as we did before as well as another layer called geometry and then we're going to create a variable called dictionary and we're going to apply a reducer called mean and then the important command is that we want to print the result of this um, dictionary to the console so if I run this code now if I run this code now You'll see it that the console tab lights up. If we head over to there, we'll see that it's returned our mean elevation. And in this instance, it's 108 meters above sea level. 
if we weren't interested in the mean, but we're interested in the max, we could just change that. And we'll change it over here to, to be consistent. Hit run again. And now instead of calculating the mean, we've calculated the max elevation, in this case, 440 meters. So that's all for, for lab two for today. Uh, a quick overview of the elevation and terrain features within Earth Engine. As I said at the start, it's a very useful way of exploring your study area. And if you're working on an environmental monitoring challenge, it's often very useful to be able to explore your study site in context. And these terrain layers are very useful for providing um, good base maps for your study site figures. And in many cases, it's worthwhile to going into deeper analyses, looking at flow lines and areas of accumulation of water and clays in the landscape. So thanks for your time. I'm a reminder to come back to the site and that this is a lab two of 10 in the series. During the course of the week, we'll be going through the rest of these labs. My name is Sean Levick. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.